What's going on, you guys? It's your boy Dylan from the Big D Trucker Show, coming at you from California. You're watching TJV Now. What you doing there, Diesel? What you doing? I'm having my breakfast. Leave me alone. Breakfast is down there, though. That was a treat. It was a good breakfast. So good morning, you fine human being, you, and all you dogs watching, too, for Diesel. I'm sure there's a cat or two out there. How's it going? We're in uh, Iowa. We're in Chester, Iowa, and if you don't believe me, There's their water tower. Water towers never lie. Now you know. We have this little lumber behind us still, and we're going down the road to uh, Cresco, Iowa to unload, and then it looks like we'll be headed home empty from here, which is, uh, uh, it was my idea to do that. It's not like they had nothing for me, but I need to get home for Christmas. Christmas does not wait, so I can't be late for Christmas. So uh, they're trying to get everybody home. And like I was telling you guys yesterday, everybody everywhere is trying to get home for Christmas. So all of the freight going back Turn to right our region. Turn right in 60 meters. How does that happen? I'm not even moving. She still wants to interrupt me. So everybody, all the freight everywhere is taken up and gobbled up already because everybody's already, the big companies go and take it to get all their drivers home, right? Or uh, that's what I'm guessing. What do I know? It's gone anyways, it's, it's gone, it's really slow. So we're probably just gonna go home empty, but for now, let's get to our customer, let's deliver this freight, let's make them happy, and we'll worry about that after. You have seven hours and 40 minutes of remaining drive time. All right, that should get us there. Let's reset all our gauges again. Make sure we know how far we went, make sure we know how much fuel we burned. All right, here we go. You ready, Diesel? All aboard. I'm just gonna check my trailer. Make sure no one's messing around with it. I checked it with my eyes before, but I like to do a tug test anyway. It makes me feel good. It'd be very embarrassing if I lost my trailer. How would I tell YouTube that? That would get a lot of views though. You know, that'd be probably one of my most viewed videos. Trucker Josh lost his trailer. What? Everyone would want to see it. The whole internet would be buzzing about that. People would be making fun of me. People would be, would be calling me all kinds of names. People would be laughing at me. So really not much different than it is right now. <laughs> let's, let's turn right here. We won't turn right. This guy's in my way. How dare you? Look at this house here. It's a pink house. Why? Why? Thank God my wife would never ask me to paint our house pink. This road for 16 kilometers. If she wanted to paint the house pink, I'd have to put my foot down. And then I'd be sleeping in the garage. It'd be awful. Pink house. So we're only 30 kilometers away, uh, 20 miles from our customer. I'm told to just go there and uh, unload and wait a little bit. They're probably going to see if they have anything pop up throughout this afternoon. And if nothing pops up, I've got to be home tomorrow night. So uh, I don't have time to run around and pick up freight tomorrow. Not too much time, unless it's like early in the morning. But if nothing pops up, well, we're going home.
we've arrived. These guys in front of me, I believe, are the ones who will be unloading me. They haven't come to talk to me yet, so I'm just sort of sitting here awkwardly, staring at them, twiddling my thumbs. I want to wait till they're finished with that guy, because I'm blocking the driveway right now. So uh, once they're done with that guy, that guy will move, and then I'll move into his spot there in the center somewhere. And then we'll figure out where they want me. It looks like they're probably going to want my lumber on the other side of this pile there. You see those right there? That's the same lumber that I have on my trailer. So I'm guessing that's where they're going to want to put my stuff. So probably unload me over there. And then bring it over there once they're done with that guy. That's what I'm guessing. Well, we've got some good news. We have a reload. We're picking up freight in Milwaukee in the morning. And it delivers to Saskatchewan and British Columbia after Christmas. That'll work out perfect. So I don't know if I'll be home tomorrow night. I might be late tomorrow night. If not, I'll be home Saturday morning. So we're heading over to uh, the Milwaukee area right now to find a parking spot somewhere and wait till the morning and wait for... Uh... Really? I just started moving. Wait for uh, the details to come through because I don't know what I'm picking up I don't know where I'm picking it up all I know is I'm picking it up they offered it to me and I said I'll take it I'll take it send me the details I'll I'll head that way a little bit more money in the bank before Christmas nothing wrong with that I'm just waiting for something something to go off my phone Karen my e-log something's gonna make a noise real soon because I want to start talking to you guys and every time I want to start talking to you guys something makes a noise to interrupt me it's like they don't want me to vlog but I'm gonna vlog anyways because they can't stop me I'm the boss what is this, oh, this is Cresco see even Cresco has a water tower every little town has a water tower you know so it's I guess back in the day you had to have one. Nowadays they got all the fancy pumping facilities and everything. But uh, anyway, sounds like we got some peace and quiet here. We can chat for a bit. Welcome to Cresco. So Milwaukee is about three and a half hours away. We'll get there tonight around like 4.30. I'll probably stop for a break. and I'll probably get there around five. Early enough to find a decent parking spot nearby where we gotta be. Hopefully by that time, we're, well actually by that time we will know exactly where we're picking up and what we're picking up. I don't really care what it is. Whatever it is, it's better than a whole load of sailboat fuel going home. I mean, I could have picked up that load of motorcycle doors, but this will be better. It pays a little more. That whole building solar power. Look at that. Cresco Bank. Oh, of course it's a bank because they got the money for it. Solar is not cheap. We already talked about that once. Nope. You know, before I go, I, I considered it. You know, I have an open mind. I considered this whole solar thing, this electric thing. They've got a long way to go to convince me yet. I'll think about it. I'll keep, keep my eye on it. But now I'm pretty sure my next pickup is going to be a diesel. I might get another gas, but I, I'm not convinced that that stuff will work in the winter time. And yeah, we'll see. I'm expecting a message through here because they got to confirm everything. They got to get all the paperwork themselves. And once all the paperwork's ready, they send it to me, right? For this load. I thought I'd have it by now, but. It'll come through. Give it a bit. So Milwaukee is about 1,300 kilometers away from home. So like I said, I don't think I'm going to make it tomorrow. But uh, our first, well, our second Christmas, our family gathering with Britt's mom's side is Saturday. And I'm pretty sure it's Saturday for like supper. So I shouldn't have a problem getting home for that. Even if I got to meet them gathering. I can have a shower on the way there. 
hours before getting there and I got clothes along with me I can wear. I mean, or Britt can bring my clothes with me that she wants me to wear there. You know how it goes. And then after Christmas I don't gotta worry about getting a load out. I've already got a load that I'm sitting under. All I gotta do is just Take it on down to Saskatchewan and BC. That's a good load too. So I'm guessing I'll probably unload Saskatchewan. Well, I'm only gonna be leaving on a Friday, eh? Yeah. We'll see. Let's just focus on Christmas for now. Let's get this load delivered or let's get this load picked up and let's just get home for Christmas. We'll worry about everything else after. I don't know if you guys can see it off to the right there. It's a nice paved walking path along this highway in the middle of nowhere. That'd be so nice if they do that around our area. That's sort of what I want to do eventually on our property. I mean, because I'm building all these trails, I'm expanding them every summer a little bit more, a little bit more. Next year I'll be expanding it through that section I showed you. If you follow my videos religiously, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, well, you gotta, you gotta go sift through them. But uh, I'll show you again in spring. I'm making, uh, expanding them a bit. And I'm gonna lay some limestone or something, some nice walking stones down eventually on the pathway just to make it a nice walking path. I would love to pave it with asphalt, but uh, that's, that probably won't happen. I mean, I'll pave my driveway before I pave my walking paths. I mean, all, gravel's a lot easier to fix too. I mean, asphalt, it cracks, it buckles. I mean, gravel, all you gotta do is drag it, right? And then it's smooth again. That's probably what we'll do. And then uh, in future Christmas seasons, we want to string Christmas lights along our trails through the bush so that uh, we can turn them on and go for a nice, you know, evening stroll, evening Christmas stroll, if it's not too cold. I think the kids will really like that. Once we have kids, we'll, uh, we want to make Christmas like a magical time of year for them. So, Brett and I really both enjoy Christmas, so I'm thinking our, our kids, well, they don't really got a choice. <laughs> Christmas is gonna be awesome. Nice little scenic area. What is this, effigy mounds? Effigy mounds? Iowa. What a scenic little section of highway we're going through here. Look right along this big river off to our left. We're sort of snaking our way through these hills. You know, if you thought Iowa was all flat, oh, you would be incorrect. There's actually some very scenic roads going through here. We're about to cross over this river off to our left. It's a historical marker in half a mile. Well, what could it be? I bet you it has something to do with this railway right beside us. It's right there. I bet you it was when they laid the last rail here or something. It's probably quite a quite an engineering feat when they uh, when they got it through here, you know? Just like in, up in Canada when they got the railway through the Rocky Mountains, that's a huge deal. You know, we connected the East Coast to the West Coast, you know, uniting Canada coast to coast with a rail system. That was a big deal. It's probably some. Well, that's the historical marker. What is it, a little ghost town? That's cool. Where do people live there? It's so fascinating to learn about how each area you go through was formed and settled and built. Turned into something beautiful, you know? I hope that never gets lost, you know? We, I'm always fascinated by like lost ancient civilizations and stuff and uh, pre-human, like prehistory before people uh, or, you know, before history was all lost. Like, can you imagine, let's say like, let's say, can you imagine a day when Karen doesn't interrupt me when I'm telling a story? Can you imagine another day, like let's say a thousand or two thousand years in the future, maybe like five, ten thousand years in the future, way down the road, it's gonna happen, right? You can't stop time. It's gonna happen, it's gonna come. Can you imagine if all of Western history was lost? Or some kind of cataclysmic event, like let's say like uh, another asteroid hits the Earth or some kind of 
some kind of big apocalypse that could wipe us all or almost all out and then you know we slowly regain our numbers again then you know 10 20 thousand years down the road we're, we're back at pretty big numbers uh population wise and then, turn right at 170 meters. and then we're uh, rediscovering old lost civilizations like america or canada or europe australia you know like all these like beautiful civilizations that they're going to be rediscovering oh man i mean man i wonder what they're going to think about us. I wonder what they're going to think we were. Slide left on. First Street, I-76 and then turn right at 170 meters. Like this big massive bridge we're about to go over. Can you see it there? Sort of off to the left. We're about to go over that bridge. Like, imagine, not likely, but imagine that bridge were to still be standing after, you know, being abandoned or whatever for 10,000 years. And then someone discovers it and they'd be like, how did they build that, right? What do I want to do? I want to turn left here. Okay. Left it is. That was a stop sign. That's why we stopped. Marquette. Is that what this town is called? Marquette. In 100 meters, turn right on US 18 and then turn right into 180 meters. I want to go over the big bridge. Over the big bridge. This way. This way. A nice Chevy. You know those new Chevy Silverados? They're growing on me. They're really growing on me. I hated them. You guys know this. I gave Chevy a hard time. I still think that they kind of messed up the design when it comes to the hood. I don't like that they took three inches off the hood. I like it that they added it to the interior. There's three inches more space in the interior. But you didn't have to take that away from the hood. Just make the truck longer. I would have been okay with that. Alright. What a cool little town over there, look at that. People living their lives, doing their thing. I never even knew they existed, but here they are. Never been here before. They probably don't even know I exist. This little trucker guy from Southeast Manitoba. Visiting their town, passing through, they have no idea who I am, where I, where I came from. No idea, they'll never know. So many people in this world. So what river is this? Is it going to tell me? Usually there's a sign that says, you're passing over this and this river. No? I think we're going into the next state. Karen, are we crossing the border into a new state? Karen? Crossing border, entering Wisconsin. Oh, in two Wisconsin. kilometers, turn right on South Main Street, US 18. Okay, so welcome to Wisconsin, everybody. Land of roundabouts. Oh, here it says Wisconsin, Crawford County. Okay. Sturgeon Slow Hiking Trail. Oh, that would be fun. That would be fun. Maybe we we'll stop for a hike? Nah, no, nah, I gotta get to Milwaukee. I don't think they want trucks in there anyway. That's one sort of downer about driving a big truck. All these cool little neat things that you want to go see, you can't because they don't want trucks in there. That's why I want to have a a, a rack built onto my new truck. South Main Street, US 18. Look, I've been looking around already, but I'm thinking about maybe in five to ten years, a while, right? At least five years to buy my W900, you know, 280 inch wheelbase. That's the maximum I'm allowed to have in Canada without a permit. 283 inches is the max, 7.2 meters wheelbase. So I'm thinking, you know, 283 inch wheelbase. Kenworth W9 Studio Sleeper, and then I want to build a in custom meters, headache rack, right? Right on South Main Street, US 18. I want to build a custom headache rack that uh, has a, an enclosed headache rack for all my chains and stuff. But in front of that, between that and the truck, I want to have a little compartment where I can park a motorcycle and have ramps that are built in that slide in underneath it, and I can use, you know, because I want to be able to take my motorcycle with me and go and explore these places. I mean, that's the, my favorite part about this job. That's a yield sign, just so you know. Yield. I yielded. But, uh, the, my favorite part of this job is seeing 
all of these, but you know, learning about their history. You know, I'm, I'm weird that way. A lot of people don't care about history. You know, that's not important to them. I don't know, that's something that interests me. So I like learning about the town that I'm in and then going around and exploring it and seeing it for myself. That's, that's why I say my channel's not all about trucking because in my brain, in three kilometers, it's not all about trucking. On lower Wisconsin River Road Scenic Byway, US 18. I don't want to just focus on trucking because there's so much more, so much more to this world than just driving a truck. This this is just what I use. It's sort of like a paid vacation, you know? I enjoy trucking a lot. I love my job, but I love that it takes me places that I haven't been before. How many people can say that about their job? Like, I've never been to this town before. I don't know what this place is, but I bet you it's filled with nice people. Oh, thank God, I think we finally found... Is this an interstate? No, it's a U.S. highway, but it's a freeway. No more roundabouts. Oh, we've gone through so many roundabouts already since we got into Wisconsin. Oh, as Isaac Butterfield would say, someone needs to give the creator roundabouts an award immediately. What a waste of time. At least they don't have those roundabouts on the freeway. Can you imagine? I like how one of you, uh, in one of my comments, I shared something about roundabouts on Facebook and TikTok, and uh, one of your responses was, oh, roundabouts, I thought those were just speed bumps. <laughs> uh, and from Europe and Australia and New Zealand, you guys are more used to these roundabouts, so to you guys, you, you guys laugh at us and our inability to navigate them. Continue on this road for 60 kilometers. And uh, it's just because it's not common here at all. At all, at all. Like, and we don't like them. We really don't like them. We want to be different. They're putting these roundabouts everywhere. I don't know who came up with the idea. I understand the purpose of them, but whoever designed it needs to get an award immediately. Well, here we are. Johnson's Creek. Wisconsin. I almost forgot where we were. Why did I almost say Michigan? Well, because I was thinking of Battle Creek. Michigan. Oh, we're in Johnson's Creek, Michigan, and that's where we're going to end our day. Did a lot of talking today. I think we talked enough, so I'll keep this short. Don't forget to subscribe. We're going to make another video tomorrow while we go pick up our freight and make our way home for Christmas. See you then.